Echo, Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called, I'm going to go ahead and guess it's pronounced Shafa. And, yeah, uh, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to it, including this episode. I absolutely love this episode, as I love most things MCU. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we open on the creation myth, it appears, of the... Was it Ch Cha Tao people? I'm I'm trying. I I I don't mean any disrespect to Native Americans. And yeah, so very early in this episode, we meet Maya's family, and you know we already knew that she, like, the Hawkeye miniseries told us that she lost her mother. And in that show, we see her lose her father. Yeah, the fact that, you know, she lost the rest of her family, though not not, not to death, you know, yeah. it's It adds to her tragedy. It's sadly not a, a huge surprise. I look forward to seeing more of, of Bonnie. She was really only, the, the adult Bonnie, she was only seen from afar here. She's played by Devery Jacobs, who also... You know, she was, she played Kahori in two episodes of What If, and yeah, really, really glad to see her in more clearly incredibly talented, based on What If, and yeah, honestly, before I, I dive any further, now that I've brought up both characters, so apparently, I don't know why, um, let's see, her name... So the 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 commentator, let's go with that. I don't know if I think that journalist Grace Randolph. I don't know why she's still around. I don't she, as far as I know this is far from the first time she said something completely absurd. I'll link Eric's Reloaded's video in the description box because he says most of what I have to say on the matter, but just, yeah, it's a completely absurd statement that, you know, oh, is there really, you know, do we need to have more than one, you know, Native American in in a comic book story? And she makes the completely absurd claim that Maya Lopez and Kahori are are way too similar, which is just like, I mean, yeah, to, to a bigot, like, they can't see anything else. Like, the moment that it's a Native American is, well, what? They're, they're the same. No, they're, they're you know, and, and, yeah, in the Eric's Reloaded video, there's an excellent clip of, of Devery Jacobs, you know, confronting that and, and doing an excellent, yeah. Um, I, honestly, I, I have very little to add. All I'll say is... Considering that Grace Randolph is white, I don't know, I would not want to be a white person saying, do we need this many Native Americans, considering, I'm not sure if Grace Randolph is, is American, but, you know, yeah. Some generations back, the settlers tried to genocide Native Americans, so maybe don't say, do we really need so many of them just yeah moving on let's see but but yeah you know just heartbreaking you know she yeah child maya says to, to child bonnie you're my family we're sisters not just cousins sisters and then they you know they lose each other i like the detail that um i i forget if we had been told this in in Hawkeye. I haven't watched that in like a year or something. But evidently, Maya's mother was also uh, um, deaf mute. You know, and yeah, you know, seeing this this interpreter, the the you know talking to yeah. 
t or, uh, not interpreter, seeing someone, seeing that the, the, so I guess, let's see, I guess these are the, yeah, that must be, must be the parents of Maya's mother, you know, talking, using sign language to, to communicate with her. Yeah, really, really great to see. And always great to see Graham Greene in something. And let's see. Yeah, the, the story is quite fun. And the, the thing, you know, we should all love something as much as that guy loved peaches. <laughs> he loved peaches so much he showed the world his peaches. And, well, the people present his peaches. And let's see. See, the yeah and and as they're leaving the the bird from the creation myth you know which evidently is some sort of like bad omen it it brings you know yeah like like how you know there's a number of of white people who think oh you know ravens crow ravens and or crows you know bad omen and, you know, unfortunately, you know, I, I'm not saying that she could necessarily have, have done, like, how would you guess that, oh, you know, make sure you don't use the car, like, it's, you know, but, yeah, the, the, you know, she does what many in stories like this do and say, ah, oh, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's nothing, it's probably nothing. And, yeah, I like the line. Are they out there in the tent in the rain? And the other and and Maya's mother's like, I give them five minutes or less. Or was it the other way? Yeah, sorry, bad memory. Um, yeah, and and you know they come in and you know Maya asks for for hot chocolate, and her mother says there's no more, but you know we can go to the go to the store, and you know thus Maya blames herself for this so very similar to you know Batman's origin and yeah the there's a car crash and very shortly after we're told you know it was an intentional you know someone cut the brakes I found out who they've been taken care of you know and Maya's grand grandmother says, you know, so am I supposed to be happy that another family has been destroyed? And Maya's father says it makes me feel better. You know, and that is, of course, kind of the exact wrong thing to say under the circumstances because, you know, Maya's grandmother is already thinking, you know, I, I knew it, you know, and, and she goes off on the thing, about, you know, I told Let's see, I told her not to marry you. I said the Lopez boys are no good. They're criminals. And, yeah, you know, you can understand how... And, and this is, of course, this is something that has happened many times and appears in a number of fictional accounts. The, the you know, uh, a criminal is, is being targeted the attack, you know, they, they target the, the car or something along those lines, and it actually, it accidentally kills not the, the criminal, but one of their loved ones. And... Let's see... Then we have the... Yeah, uh, so... Um... Maya's father drives them away from there, and, you know, both Maya and Bonnie want, you know, yeah, want to stay together. They don't want to be separated, and, you know, that's, it's not up to either of them. And, yeah, really, really heartbreaking, the, the slow motion as she, she signs... Bonnie's name just yeah and yeah once they reach New York they pretty quickly I, I've seen some people say oh you know they, they spend too long of too much of this episode recapping Hawkeye 
I mean, let's keep in mind, Hawkeye, that was 2021. That was three years ago, you know, two and a half, three years ago. This That's not nothing. I, I think it's the, the, yeah, it's reasonable to assume that there's a, a number of people, you know, I don't know if they necessarily wouldn't have watched. Certainly, I don't. I don't think this is meant for people who didn't watch Hawkeye. I think it's for people who haven't watched it in two and a half, three years. You know, I, there's not a huge amount of MCU stuff that's for people who aren't already, you know, pretty deep into the MCU. But you know, certainly, I don't think that this would have the emotional resonance because they're going through the. I mean, you have no context whatsoever for the the confrontation between Clint, where he reveals the truth to Maya and Maya, if you only see it here. You know, like, okay, maybe you remember, oh, right, I mean, Clint was the... the yeah, you have some context, but you don't have enough to, to really... No, I'm I'm almost certain it's meant for people who just need a quick refresher, and I really don't think they spent too long on it. And yeah, so Maya attacks some some cops with a with a motorcycle, and I love some of it is silent. Like once the the motorcycle crashes into the cop car, then we we hear it, but. For a little while there, it's like we're seeing it from her perspective. And, yeah, you know, Wilson, Fisk is trying to, to relate to her and says, My father was also killed. Which, I mean, that's one way to look. I, I guess that is not technically untrue that is by in a, in a very pedantic sort of way yeah Wilson Fisk's father was killed he's just stopping short of saying by me and but but then you know throughout like we've seen this with his character before this is completely consistent with his character he you know, recontextualizes things to to make it. Yeah, you know, he's he's not. Yeah, I think I said what I wanted to about that, and yeah, so Maya goes on a job for Kingpin, and the the guys there don't really take it take her particularly seriously. And the, the, yeah, the security guard, you know, gropes her and she, yeah, you know, she, she hits him. She, she attacks him after and yeah, it's, it's quite cathartic to see. It's, I'm, I'm not saying we can make that happen every time someone sexually assaults someone else in real life. You know, what I'm saying is, I wouldn't mind if everyone who might sexually assault someone fears that they'll be, you know, attacked in in retaliation, and thus does as as long as that makes them not sexually assault anyone. And let's see, then we, yeah, I the. The next section very much felt like, yeah, this is this is the kingpin of the the Daredevil show, you know, very like the people who work for him are are very brutal and and ruthless, and you know we have the thing, Kingpin thanks you for your loyalty, and the guy knows, oh, that means I shoot the guy I've been working with for who knows how long, who trusts me enough. To not be watching to make sure I don't shoot him in the face. And 
we get this very Daredevil style long take of a brutal fight and even eventually Daredevil himself does join in very very cool and I know some people are gonna some the anti SJWs SJWs are gonna flip out when they see that this positions a woman as you know able to do something that some men are struggling with the episode makes it very clear Maya is very observant we also you know that was something they made sure to show in the recap you know she she observes before she attacks she doesn't just jump into it which those two guys were literally doing you know one of them like jumps you know yeah hits up against a door to to get in and just starts shooting you know he's he's basically trying to john wick the situation and yeah there's just there's too many of them sid and maya you know observes waits for the right moment and then attacks and that's why she's so much more effective and she's also she's a better fighter than they are they're good with guns but she is also a really excellent fighter and yeah really really cool fight between her and daredevil and it also he also felt completely consistent the way he fights and the fact that you know once he is able to you know once he's sure that she's not going to shoot him as he's trying to to make his escape he makes his escape because th this is not quite going you know he's not it's possible that he would eventually be able to defeat her but it's not happened yet, so this might be a good time to to get out of there, and you know, and as Wilson Fisk tells her, you know, you're the, no none of my guys have been able to go toe to toe with Daredevil like that, and yeah, it was indeed a test. He knew that Daredevil would be watching these guys, and she was there to to stress test her her fighting ability against yeah which again very consistent with Fisk's characterization on Netflix and yeah so 28 minutes into the episode we're completely caught up to the end of Hawkeye season 1 and the episode I think is like 43 minutes if you don't count end credits and yeah so she goes back to Oklahoma sews the wound with dental flaws and the so apparently his name is biscuits her her cousin is still there and yeah you know the the he clearly misses her so that's kind of sweet and she's trying to be all business about it and let's see. yeah and she yeah she watches Bonnie from afar but they wouldn't have hired Devery Jacobs if it was just gonna be from afar in an upcoming episode she's definitely and I just realized I completely forgot to mention I will be doing one episode per day I'm not doing all five episodes today that's just not a th I don't I don't really do the kind of binging where I just watch one episode after another after another it's just I find it exhausting so yeah it's gonna take so I, let's see Sunday I'll be done with all the entire first season and I'll do the review probably Sunday maybe Tuesday now the yeah so she yeah she goes to the the skating rink and I, I appreciate the detail that some of the, the skaters are I, I didn't quite catch if they were elderly or if it's other reasons but they're they have some physical impairment of, of legs or, or something like that because they're using these like walkers and you know yeah like for a long time the assumption was oh I guess they just never do any physical you know yeah anything physical because they 
they can't anymore but that's not actually true for, for some it is sure but there are a number of people who you know yeah the fact that they have you know that that aspect does not mean that they never do anything along those lines it can actually be quite good if if you're able to you know it's a it's a mistake to if if you if you are able to if you are physically able to you should try to you know move your body at least a little to keep it ah what's the word yeah it it'll deteriorate if if not and that's of course not you know it's not i'm i'm not saying that if you are if if you have a good reason not to of course you know yeah then then don't do it but you know don't don't do it don't remain physically inactive just because people are saying you know oh i don't know at your age or you know unless those people are doctors or physical therapists or such but yeah and <laughs> i like this she points out are we really are you still doing this because we've been doing this since the 90s and you know he points out look at how their faces light up you know and yeah like i i've never played red light green light on skates but i can imagine because you know and, and he points out oh use your core you know because yeah it like it's it can already be a challenge to to do it if you're just on foot but on skates you know you were moving fast and suddenly you have to just stop you know just yeah but it looks like fun i i could definitely imagine and yeah so the the jerk that works at the at the rink sends a text message because there's a bounty on her head for you know that they, they call her the king killer and you know that is the the um, that's also something that a number of organized crime families you know there's a hefty toll if you kill or or in this case grievously injure someone who has a high position in the family and yeah so the the doctor to to check is a mortician yeah that's and i i got to say the the thing about you know yeah it was it was a it was an amusing little scene and i you know, dental floss nice and yeah um henry points out are you seriously not if you don't visit bonnie and she finds out that you were here it will break her heart and you know maya signs back her feelings are uh, none of my concern and he says i think you're wrong about that and she signs back or, or yeah he signs and then she signs back that's none of my concern either or not none of my business something like that and she signs it's time for a queen which is very very badass and yeah really it's a it's a very logical story to tell because in hawkeye it was very clear she is ambitious she's not really you know and it's it's essentially she is never getting her family back that's just not a thing that's going to happen. They are dead. So she's trying to fill the 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 void with that, you know, and it is also, you know, as as wonderful as it would be if it never went that way, sometimes if someone is some somewhat involved in organized crime and it costs them someone they love instead of abandoning organized crime which i do also acknowledge that can be extremely difficult you know they they tend not to let you they keep pulling you back in yeah sadly that for a number of people that makes them double down that makes them 
even more, you know, yeah, diving deeper into organized crime. And yeah, the episode ends with us seeing that Fisk did indeed survive, as had been theorized. And yeah, really, really cool. And they they did the thing with like it's his his eyes or at least one of them I'm not sure if we saw if, if it was both, which I believe is from the comics. He was he was shot and left for dead and comes back, and and the eyes, which is of course you know Daredevil also lost his his sight, and yeah we get a tease for upcoming episodes. And yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing more of this. Um, I think that is everything that I had. Yeah, I, I really hope that this episode helped put to, to bed this notion that, oh, you know, if it's someone who doesn't speak but uses sign language, that means we can't get as emotionally invested. I, I really think this episode did a lot to help combat that. And I, you know, there's a lot of negative things to say about Disney. But I do really appreciate that they actually, you know, yeah, for one thing that this is, and this is like TVMA, as it clearly should be. I, I don't, I did love She-Hulk, but I do think that from now on, Daredevil it should probably be, you know, and, and his cameo in No Way Home was fun. I do think that it makes more sense for Daredevil to be TVMA or R-rated if it's a movie. But yeah, that's one thing. The other is I really appreciate that Disney didn't cave despite, you know, some people... Yeah, saying that they didn't want a character who used sign language in the MCU because you you could easily see how they could have instead of doing it in subtitles, like maybe dubbed it over or something for the people who refuse to. But you know, the the deaf and mute exist in the real world, and they deserve to have their stories told.